everyone and welcome to the SaaS developer community. This is the last episode of 2022. I'm your host, Gwen Shapira. I'm here on my own to summarize the year before I take a short holiday break and we'll come back in 2023 with a lot of cool new content. So I thought it's a really good time to summarize the year and how the year went in our community and then just highlight some tech trends from 2022, things that I think may happen in 2023. What a nice way to, to close the year. So let's start with our community by numbers. We started the year in our Slack channel with around 900-ish members. Today, as we didn't even close the year, we are at 1,540. So not quite doubled, but really impressive. Now, hundreds of new members have joined and it's amazing. On the YouTube front, we have added 714 members and we are now at 805, I believe. So the channel just exploded in the last year and it's been very, very satisfying. In addition, in the last year, uh, in July, we started a newsletter uh, and like it's a newsletter blog, so you can get it by email or you can get it on the website. Uh, we call it Hacking SaaS and we, I basically share the best content that I find for SaaS developers. A lot of it comes from things that people recommend in our Slack channel and some other stuff that I found fascinating around the web. So the topics the community ended up being the most interested in has been databases and all kinds of data stacks, data architectures, multi-tenancy, has been a very big deal uh, because, as you know, all SaaS applications end up having customers as tenants and you need to worry about them. Infrastructure, things like deployment, CI, CD, Kubernetes, Terraforms, Pulumis, SRE topics have been popular, control planes, of course, and other kinds of platforms for managing systems. APIs, also, of course. Billing and security have all been very popular topics. And the newsletter have started with 1,200 uh, members, mostly from our Slack. And now it is at 1,600. So also a lot of really nice growth this year. So those topic of interests are also reflected in our top video. I will share a list and the really top video by a huge margin has been Ram talking and introducing the control plan architecture for infrastructure SaaS. It had, I think, like double the number of views and the runner up or something like that. But if you look at the topics in general, exactly databases, APIs, security, infrastructure, platforms. So we now know what SaaS developers are interested in. Let's talk about relevant trends in 2023. This is even more interesting than what we were interested in last year. So the biggest thing, I don't know if you guys noticed, in the last week, every one and was only talking about one thing, which is the new OpenAI chat that you can basically ask him anything and get really smart answers. Ask them anything except apparently predictions for 2023 or even predictions for 2010 and two for that matter. It will not give predictions. I asked him about top trends for 2021 and it actually gave pretty nice answers. Things like cloud computing, IoT, and of course, machine learning. So it's extremely good at predicting the past, but as Yogi Berra said, predictions are extremely difficult, especially about the future. Now, regardless of the AI bot inability to predict the future, yeah, I, I predict that all those content marketing blogs that look like they have been written by a bot are going to actually start getting written by a bot. In addition to AI helping marketing by creating 
the marketing blogs. It is also extremely helpful, and I've personally been using it uh, uh, recently, in helping edit videos. It's getting a lot better at automating a lot of the tasks that are actually very hard to get right manually and have to be done very consistently. It can even fix the voice by mimicking my voice as I use text editor. Like There's something called the script that allows me to, if I misspeak, I can actually edit the text and it mimics my voice and fixes what I said in the video. So basically you cannot believe anything that you're seeing on the internet anymore. Professionals could always fake anything, but now even complete amateurs like me can fake way more than I'm actually comfortable with. And AI has been extremely helpful in that. Easy prediction to make. In 2023, we're going to have a lot more shift left of things into software developers. Operation, more operations into software developers, more security, more data engineering, more data analytics. I know this because I noticed that every time I asked to give some sense of cool trends in a space, in this podcast, when I interviewed people, no matter what I interviewed them about, they always said, oh yeah, my space, it's very trendy to shift left, to move my responsibilities of what used to be specialists in my field onto perfectly normal software engineers who now have a bit more to worry about. Uh, I have every reason to believe that this trend will continue, if not accelerate, in 2023, partially because, as you may have noticed, especially in big companies, they are not hiring as much as they used to. So it makes a lot of sense to push more responsibility into the software engineers that they have instead of finding specialists. Uh, so I expect we will see a lot more of that. I really hope that in 2023 we will actually see the hiring trends and in, in general the economic outlook and growth kind of reverse itself, but I'm not making any bets around it. Another thing we've been seeing starting 2022, and I think it will only get, will get more of that, is really the push to the edge or even to remote regions. In general, web applications, the faster the better. Users will never ever say, oh, I wish your SaaS was a bit slower. I'm analyzing data just way too quickly here. Not gonna happen. So you see people have more remote data centers and you see a lot more edge functions, not just by the big cloud vendors, even companies like Cloudflare, Vercel, Fly, all those things allow you to distribute your application more, especially with services functions. But we're also seeing a lot more data being pushed to the edge, both by just deploying plain old databases to the edge and synchronizing them. If you, again, look at Fly, or what Cloudflare is doing is create those really interesting caching patterns that allow them to push data, especially key value stores, to the edge and they have really interesting ways to synchronize things and automate things. And the nice thing is that even though writes, for example, still have to go to the central data center, they don't force you to worry about it. You, can, you use normal data access patterns, they worry about synchronizing your data when it should be. And it's eventually consistent. They have some advice on how to make it consistent. And I've been seeing more and more advances in the caching space, not just that, we talked here in this channel to Felix building Venice. He talked about this really cool caching, partial caching pattern that Venice has, which basically you don't have to care if you're talking to a cache or to the real database, exactly same APIs. We've been seeing ReadySet as a pretty cool new startup, very, very new. So I, and I, I haven't used the product, I can, but the idea is awesome. The idea of caches that are a transparently kept up to date and are completely transparent to the app because they present exactly the same APIs as the database. This is pretty darn cool. Um, so I'm definitely watching the caching space very closely. Or the reverse trend, DuckDB has been absolutely inescapable. You cannot have a conversation on the internet without someone say, oh, use DuckDB. DuckDB is an all-up, uh, so 
analytical database that is uh, embedded, but for especially the use case is for your desktop. It's for people who want to analyze data on their desktop. Why do we want to do it? Why is it so popular? Why is it such a big deal? Absolutely no clue. I mean, I get that you don't want to do everything in Excel, but I mean, isn't there like good SaaS services for that? Are they too slow? Like what is the problem we're trying to solve here? Is still completely unclear to me, but in 2023, I will probably find out. Uh, speaking of analyzing data, the space of real-time analytics in production is really heating up. You see tons of services, Pinot, Druid, ClickHouse, Rockset, Timescale. I'm sorry if I'm forgetting someone. There is a good chance your customers would appreciate if your product showed them more data about their usage, about things that are going on, allowed them to see nice graphs. And there is literally zero excuses not to do it with so many managed services around providing you the database you need for that. The other trend we are seeing, and I think this has a lot to do with everything is moving to the edge and getting faster and closer to customers, is applications looking for ways to help people collaborate. Whether it's Figma, which obviously had this gigantic sale earlier in the year to Adobe, or yeah, I don't know if you've used Hex. Uh, I think Oz from Triverse on this show recommended Hex. It's collaborative IPython no uh, notebooks as a service. Really, really cool stuff. We're all working from home, or a lot of us are working from home. We're looking for better ways to collaborate than just Zoom talks. Uh, I've in this show I've I've demonstrated how my colleague Norwood and I myself use Excalibur. Also very collaborative. You can see each other drawing. I think we will see a lot more collaborative apps again because the technology has gotten better because we have so much more things that we can do at, in real time close to the customers. More on databases prediction. Postgres is going to remain the most popular database. We did a survey early in the year. Everyone loves Postgres. Second up is DynamoDB. There's good reasons for that. SQL is cool again. And Postgres is considered extremely reliable. And it looks like multi-model databases that support you know, both documents or key value and SQL, like no SQL and SQL combined. They're starting to get some um, traction and uh, adoption, and Postgres is kind of the OG of multimodal databases. It definitely da does both JSON and relational really well and with very decent performance too. What we've been saying is that there are 50 Postgres service companies out there and counting, starting from things that just you know spin up your VM and the database is actually your responsibility to things like Aurora Serverless, which is, as the name uh, suggests, have taken much, basically they're trying to take all the operational responsibility on concerns, give them a credit card and start running SQL is the name of the game. In the modern data stack, We've been seeing explosion in 2021 and 2022. Tons of tools, you know, just every niche has like 15 different competitors. And I have read at Ben Stancil's blog, something that I really agree with, that it's extremely likely that 2023 will be the year of consolidation, that people will look at all this complexity and themselves, is it really worth it? Do I actually gain enough value to make it worth my time to manage this gigantic beast of an architecture? Uh, so I think people will really examine every service. Do I really need it? Does it really give me more value? Could I build a simpler architecture that would be more manageable and have less moving part? A lot of streamlining and simplification. And personally, completely looking forward to that. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Um, 
of course, this is going to go goes well together with all those serverless databases or managed databases that are already a lot of them and more to come. On the API front, security and observability have been huge trends. They are not going anywhere. Um, standardization via open API things, I think. There was some adoption and there is not that much excitement. I haven't seen like significant improvements, I would say, in the last year. Some stuff works really well, some stuff is kind of meh, uh, but it seemed I haven't seen like cool innovation. I don't expect innovation in, in 2023, but I expect REST APIs to remain the dominant way in which you communicate in between in APIs. Uh, for SaaS services. Uh, GraphQL, you know, a few years back had its huge hype. Again, people use it. There are proponents. If when I suggested that maybe it's not popular, I had a lot of people show up on Twitter to correct my mistake, but I don't predict any kind of explosive growth. And I suspect maybe part of the reason we may not see a lot of explosive growth is that Facebook, the company, behind it is now kind of struggling to find its way and maybe it doesn't push a lot of new cool ideas into that space but of course there could be other companies to take its place so this is it for my trend report uh, i'm sure i'll do one of those podcasts a year from now and tell you all how wrong I am, and then make new predictions that will prove out to be wrong. Remember that predictions are difficult, especially about the future. Unlike OpenAI, I'm not just trying to predict 2021. I wish you really amazing holidays. I hope you get to relax and have spent quality time with people that are close to your heart. And I hope you will have a good time at the end of this year. And I wish you a very strong and very sassy start to 2023. See you in January.